Hey guys, it's Ryan, and today we're here um, with my avatar Fianna Dora in the Great Canadian Grid on one of my sims called Terminus. And we're here today to talk about um, editing raw terrain files in Photoshop um, to create your own um, island terrains. So um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Google and you're going to Google Second Life Terrain Files and you're going to choose your first search result um, which is from the Second Life Wiki here Default Private Region Raw Files. And it's taking a minute to open. Apologies. And here we've got um, a bunch of raw files that you can download and take a look at. But the one we're going to use for today, to edit for today, is the flat green raw file. Right click to save link as. And uh, the name of the file is flat green and it's a raw file. I'm just going to save it to my desktop. And uh, now we're going to go back into Firestorm. I'm going to select World, Region Details, Terrain tab, Upload Raw Terrain. I'm going to go back to my desktop. If I can find it, desktop. Choose my flat green. Press Open. And this um, uh, message here indicates uh, that it takes up to two minutes for um, the upload to occur and that is usually pretty accurate. So I'm just going to pause here and we'll come back in two minutes. Okay, so the train just updated and I'm going to uh, watch my avatar fall to the ground because the elevation is um, much lower than the original train we were on. And as you can see, flat green is a perfectly flat square parcel, much different than the one we were standing on before. And now we're going to go into Photoshop and take a look at this file and figure out how we can edit it from the starting point. Okay, so now we're in Photoshop. I'm going to go to Open and I'm going to scroll down and find the flat green raw file. Um, you can change, uh, it may say all files, but you can change it to Photoshop raw. Select your fa flat green file and press Open. The raw options dialog opens. You can see that the image is 256 by 256 pixel square. The number of channels is 13. This is a legacy number. We actually only work with three of them, um, but you require 13 uh, in the file for it to upload uh, to an open sim grid. Um, interleaved should be checked and 8 bits should be checked and the header size should be zero. I'm going to press OK. Um, I'm just going to zoom in here 200% so that I can see the image a little bit better. Now, if I go to the Layers panel, it appears as though I have a red um, box on my screen and it's a locked layer. We actually don't even need to edit um, it on the layer side at all. We'll go to the Channels panel instead. And the reason why it shows as red is because it's got channels activated. Um, RGB is really just the red, green, and blue channel all shown at the same time, which is what causes it to appear red. Um, if I was to select each channel, individually, um, you'd see that they're actually, you know, grayscale channels. Now, if I use my color picker or the eyedropper tool and select the top layer, I can see that the RGB of this is 122, 122, 122. Um, and I also have my, um, in my options here, I have H the B and HSB selected, which gives me the grayscale um, uh, bar here. So if I move up, or down. The colors stay in a perfect neutral gray. So we're going to go back to 122, which was the uh, default. Now if you remember in the um, uh, in the viewer, um, flat green um, was uh, a perfectly square uh, parcel exactly just barely on top of the water line. So exa almost exactly even with the water line, but slightly above so that none of the water bleeded onto it. Um, that value is 122. If we think about this as being water and up here's the sun and down here's the murky bottom, we bring it all the way down to zero, then you're at way below uh, ocean level because we know that um, the sea level is about here. So you're, you're way below sea level. And if you go all the way up here, then you're far above sea level. Um, 
you know, at the peak, the absolute peak of your mountain. So as long as you think about that gradation, um, you can paint a terrain fairly easily. So we're going to go back to one, two, two, and I'm just doing this with the dials instead of dragging it. It's probably a little faster, maybe not. Um, and I'm going to press OK. Now, each of these layers actually represents something different. The red layer is your terrain painting layer, so all of the terrain is going to be painted on this layer. The green layer is an amplification layer, so um, you can only do so much with 255 channels. Um, with this green layer, you can multiply or um, uh, multiply um, your effort um, so that it um, uh, you can create higher terrains than would be possible uh, with just this file alone. Um, if you go back um, to your search results, um, this is the file where you downloaded the file. This one here, this tip for creating height fields. This is a technical document that kind of explains um, uh, a bunch of uh, information about the amplification channels and how you're going to use them. We won't do them today in my tutorial and we're just going to paint on the red um, layer but uh, if you want to experiment with, the, with that um, you can definitely uh, try this um, or check out this portion of this article. Um, also the blue layer is the sea level. So again uh, Second Life has a default sea level and it kind of matters how it lines up with other sims like when another sim parks next to yours and their sea level is different than yours it would cause this jag. So um, generally we leave the sea level at default so we're also not going to um, uh, play with this one today. So what I'm going to do is um, if you click RGB it turns them all on and displays as RGB but if you select one of the layers It'll turn off the visibility for the rest of them and then leave um, the visibility only open for the uh, red layer. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just create a really soft hill, um, hill type island. So uh, you're going to go to your gradient tool and I have these settings preset, but on the left we're going to set it to 60, 60, 60, which isn't all the way down to the bottom of the sea floor, um, but it's pretty far down. And uh, well below sea level. And then on the other end, I'm going to go to 160, 160, 160. So that again is about 40 points um, above sea level. And we're going to say OK. And OK here as well. I'm going to make sure that you have the uh, radial gradient selected. And then you're going to place your mouse somewhere around the center and drag out to a corner. And as you can see, it's created a gradation between the 160 color and the um, uh, 60 uh, RGB um, in a radial gradient pattern. You can also see here that only the red channel has been affected. The green and blue have not been. And you can see the uh, application, the change of this layer in the combined RGB. I'm going to click the combined RGB channel. And we can see our updated um, raw file. And I'm going to press File save as. I'm going to choose Photoshop raw from the list and I'm going to call this one flat green hill. I'm going to press save. I'm going to leave the header at zero and interleave order checked and press OK. And now I'm going to go back into Firestorm and I'm going to select world, region details, terrain, upload raw terrain, flat green hill. I'm going to press open the message indicating it's going to take two minutes and we will come back to you uh, when that happens. Okay, so the train is updating and I'm going to have to cam out here. So what's happened here, as you can see, is that the sim is no longer a flat parcel. The sim is a very round hill-shaped island that gradually slopes under the water. Okay, so we're going to go back into Photoshop now and look at something that isn't so gradual. Okay, so we're back in Photoshop. I'm going to control alt z to undo uh, what we just did. I'm going to press the red channel again to select it. And this time I'm going to change my foreground color down to our deep sea color. RGB 60. I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to use the Fill Bucket tool. 
and I'm going to fill it with the darker color. So now I'm starting off with the deep sea color. I'm going to select a box and I'm going to choose fixed size and set um, the size to be 230 pixels by 230 pixels. I know it's 256 pixels so I know that um, this box will sit inside my box with a little bit of a border. So I'm going to make a selection and then use my arrow keys to nudge it a little bit, try and center it as best I can. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go back to my foreground color and I'm going to add 60 to it. So I'm going to say 120, tab, 120, tab, 120. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to, with my fill bucket tool again, I'm going to fill the box. Now I'm going to go to select modify contract. I'm going to contract this selection by 20 pixels. Press OK. I'm going to go to my foreground again and I'm going to add 60 to it. So it'll be 180, tab, 180, 180. I'm going to press OK. With my fill bucket tool again, I'm going to fill the next square and I'm going to select modify contract 20. OK. And one last time, I'm going to add 60, so I'll be at 240, 240, 240. And since we know that the maximum number that this can go up to is 256, you can see that we are just 16 um, uh, points behind that. So I'm going to press OK. This is our last square. And with the Fill Bucket tool selected, I'm going to fill the last one. I'm going to click the RGB layer to turn it on. I'm going to select File, Save As. Uh, Photoshop Raw, flat green, and call it say, oops, cigarette. Press save. I'm going to leave all the default settings and press OK. And then I'm going to go back into Firestorm. I'm going to select World, Region Details, Terrain tab, Upload Raw Terrain, and this time I'm going to choose my flat green cigarette. I'm going to press close. I'm going to close this dialog and we'll see you again in two minutes. Okay, so the train's updating and again I'm going to press escape to cam out. And this time when we cam away from my avatar, we can see that the train has become a very sharp stepped ziggurat type hill. So that's exactly what we we're looking for. So you can see um, how just, you know, layering um, the different boxes, you know, you could um, create some interesting effects doing that kind of thing. Uh, so next um, we're going to do one more. We're going to do a custom shape. Um, so uh, we're going to go back into Photoshop. I'm going to press Control Alt Z a few times until we get back to where we were. I'm going to go uh, isolate the red channel. Now you see I didn't back up all the way until I changed this background color. I'm actually going to keep the 606060 RGB and we'll just confirm that's what the color is, 606060 RGB um, as the base color. And I'm going to, from this list, I'm going to choose the custom shape tool. And um, these are your custom shape panel. Um, in here, you've got some uh, default groupings. Uh, the one we're looking for is probably under nature, but you can also find it under all. But what it is is the maple leaf tool. So I'm just going to scroll down the list here. And there it is right there. And there's a couple of other leaves as well. You're welcome to experiment with them or any custom shape you want. Okay, so now I've got my red channel selected. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to click and drag with the shape tool. I'd also no, uh, note here that I have um, from this menu path selected. Um, that's how you can create a path without filling it automatically. Pixels will fill it automatically with no um, with no time for adjustment and shape will fill it with a color and I think it creates a layer which is weird so you want to make sure you have path selected. Now if I choose um, from, you may have the pen tool selected, but you want to choose the convert point tool. Click away 
so that it deselects all the points. Then draw a box around it by clicking and dragging and let it reselect all the points. I'm going to use the arrow key on my keyboard now and I'm just going to center center this. Okay, so now I have um, my path here and I can right click it and choose make selection. I'm going to set the feather radius to 5. Check anti-alias and make sure that, well, by default it has to be a new selection. I'm going to press OK. Um, and the reason I put the feather on is so that it's not a sharp selection. What it does is it basically blurs the edges of my selection, creating a gradient. Not unlike the gradient that we used um, on the hill in the first exercise. Um, and what that'll do is it'll allow um, my shape here to have a, um, a a color that gradates towards um, the background color, uh, the 60 uh, RGB. So we're going to press OK. And you can see it made the selection of the leaf but much softer and that is because of the feathering. I'm going to choose my foreground color here and we know that 122 was ground level. I want to go a little bit higher than that so let's go with 140, 140, 140. Or you can adjust the dial this way as well if you want. I just like round even numbers. I'm going to press OK. Use the find the fill bucket tool again or paint bucket tool and I'm going to fill with my new brighter color and again you can see that the edges are soft and that they gradually um, go into the deep sea color. I'm going to turn on the RGB layer by clicking it and you can see your preview is updated. I'm going to choose File, Save As. And I'm going to choose the Photoshop Raw Flat Green Underscore ma oops, caps lock song, Maple Leaf. I'm going to press Save. Leave the default settings and press OK. I'm going to go back into Firestorm. I'm going to choose World, Region Details, Terrain Tab. Upload raw terrain. I'm going to choose my flat green maple leaf and press open. Press close. Close this. And we will see you again in about two minutes. Okay, so our train is updating. You can scroll out a bit and watch my avatar fall gracefully to the ground. So now you can see that the elevation is much lower. We're well in the grass region. And as I cam around the island, you can see that it is much more island looking with its uh, nooks and crannies. And if I cam up and take a look at it from a top view, you can clearly see that the island is a maple leaf shape with a very gradual slope down under the water. So there's lots of possibilities of things you can do with custom shapes. You've got all kinds. You can download them online, um, use logos, that kind of thing, and really experiment um, with the grayscale in uh, Photoshop and, uh, and uh, see what you can do from there. So um, thanks for joining me today. Um, I uh, Hope to bring you more tutorials like this in the future. Um, if you like this tutorial or if you have any questions, first of all, uh, please feel free to leave a comment in the YouTube comments. If you like this tutorial, please feel free to give us a thumbs up and to share it with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. Um, if you'd like to read the blog uh, attached to this video, um, you can do so at ryan.ca, R-Y-A-N-N.ca. And as well, if you'd like to visit me on the Great Canadian Grid, you can learn more about it at greatcanadiangrid.ca. So thanks very much everyone and have a great day. Happy terraforming.